dinosaurs. These creatures with gigantic sizes, sword-like teeth and claws, and some believed to be as intelligent as chimpanzees, would you want to live alongside them? I'm sure none of your answers would be yes. Imagine a pterodactyl hunting your friend, or a T-Rex tearing apart and demolishing your home. These scenarios are quite terrifying. What if one of us wanted to have them among us and started working for this? Could they be successful? Can molecular biology and genetic research bring back dinosaurs that lived millions of years ago? Is this task as easy or possible as portrayed in the Jurassic Park movie? Let's delve into it. This skull belongs to the most complete Tyrannosaurus rex specimen exhibited in Europe, nicknamed Tristan Otto. With over 300 bones, 170 of which are preserved, this skeleton is currently on display at the Natural History Museum in Berlin. Abundant fossil bones, teeth, footprints, and other tangible evidence have revealed that dinosaurs ruled the Earth for at least 230 million years. The demise of dinosaurs occurred during the Cretaceous period of the Mesozoic era. At that time, there were many active volcanoes on Earth and global warming was on the rise, but these factors did not significantly affect the dinosaurs. The apocalypse for dinosaurs was to come not from Earth, but from the sky, from space. Approximately 66 million years ago, a meteorite with a diameter of about 10 kilometers struck near the Gulf of Mexico. It is believed that the impact of this meteorite was nearly 10 billion times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. As a result of this impact, countless rock, soil, and ash were catapulted into space, creating massive tsunamis in its wake. The collision triggered tectonic movements, causing earthquakes of approximately magnitude 11. However, these earthquakes were not limited to the impact site, but occurred worldwide. The impact of this earthquake was so enormous that giant trees in the forest and various rocks were falling onto the dinosaurs. Existing volcanic activity suddenly intensified, and the dust and molten rock fragments that had entered the atmosphere turned into a rain of lava, showering down on the dinosaurs. The atmosphere became a cloud of dust, igniting continuous forest fires. Subsequently, it's believed that the Earth remained in darkness for a long time, resulting in the death of plants. First, herbivores experienced a food shortage and died, followed by carnivores dying for the same reason. In this way, 76% of the existing life on Earth went extinct after this event known as the mass extinction. However, after this event, mammal ancestors, considered as the ancestors of humans, which fed on whatever they could find, gained evolutionary advantages and were able to complete their development more comfortably. In other words, it seems unlikely that humanity would have existed had the mass extinction event not occurred. Now that we've summarized the, this story, let's delve into how we can bring these creatures back. Firstly, the phrase bringing back dinosaurs is incorrect because not all dinosaurs went extinct. Some dinosaurs that managed to survive the mass extinction event evolved over time and gave rise to today's birds. In other words, the ancestors of chickens were once dinosaurs. However, what if we wanted to bring back a T-Rex, Triceratops, or a Pterodactyl? With our current technology, this is not possible. But how did they do it in the movie Jurassic Park? It was purely fiction, of course. A mosquito sucks the blood of a dinosaur, lands on a tree, and is then covered with amber, thus surviving the great extinction and they obtaining DNA that has been preserved to this day. But this is pure fiction. The reason is that the half-life of DNA is only 521 years, and the mass extinction event happened 66 million years ago, making such a scenario impossible. Amber can indeed preserve living organisms for millions of years. There are many fossils that have been found in this way. However, even if we were to find a mosquito that had been encased in amber for millions of years, the DNA inside the mosquito would have long since degraded. Therefore, because the proteins that make up the dinosaur cannot be encoded, a dinosaur cannot be brought back to life. However, if one day we manage to isolate a DNA molecule, it might be possible to cultivate cells in an artificial womb 
and bring dinosaurs back to life. For example, animals like mammoths, dodo birds, and Tasmanian tigers went extinct more recently than dinosaurs. Therefore, while their DNA may not be 100% pure, obtaining it is not extremely difficult. The project initiated by the company Colossal suggested that mammoths could be resurrected by 2027. Even though the complete genome of mammoths has not been obtained, it was announced that the missing parts could be sourced from Asian elephants, which are 99% similar to mammoths. How? Through CRISPR-Cas9. This enzyme can cut the desired part in the relevant genome and replace it with another genome. Thus, it is expected that the gaps in the mammoth genome will be completed using the genome of the Asian elephant. However, it should be noted that this process will not result in a pure mammoth, but rather a hybrid of the Asian elephant and the mammoth. Additionally, the company is still undecided about whether to proceed with this project for various reasons. I had previously mentioned that bringing dinosaurs back to life is currently not possible. But what if it were? What would have happened if dinosaurs didn't go extinct during the Cretaceous period, or if we somehow managed to bring dinosaurs back to life today? Let's start by addressing the first question. If dinosaurs hadn't gone extinct during the Cretaceous period, it would have had a profound impact on the evolution of mammals. Imagine being a small mammal resembling a mouse during that time. You would be surrounded by numerous dinosaurs that could potentially hunt you. There would be creatures in the air and on land, capable of hunting you as soon as you stepped out of your nest. Your life would be spent evading natural predators, and you would often be hungry. In such circumstances, it would be extremely challenging, if not impossible, for any creature to evolve and eventually give rise to humans. Now, let's consider the second scenario. If we somehow found a way to bring these creatures back to life in our time. Since this hasn't happened yet, it remains a matter of speculation. However, it's reasonable to assume that these two species, humans and dinosaurs, could not coexist in the same geographical area. Humans would likely use their technology to control and create a new habitat for these creatures. Would we had succeed, or would we face a disaster similar to the one depicted in Jurassic Park? You can express your thoughts in the comments section. In conclusion, humanity continually seeks to try new things and persevere until they succeed. Isn't one of the characteristics that define us as humans our persistent nature? We learn new things and put them into practice every day. Unfortunately, in doing so, we often disregard the natural balance. Sometimes, even if we are aware that our actions might lead to our own demise, we tend to ignore it. When it comes to the idea of resurrecting extinct animals through natural processes, the potential impacts on ecosystems should be thoroughly researched. But no matter how much research is conducted, can we provide a definitive answer to this question? I don't know. Even Beth Shapiro, a leading figure in efforts to bring back mammoths and a recent addition to Colossal, said in a soon speech, If we can do it, should we? I don't know. Said. In summary, we currently do not know what the consequences of resurrecting extinct animals might be. But research and science continue to advance. Who knows, maybe one day you'll commute to school on the back of a pterodactyl.